I'm on a sweet trail. <laughs> Where are these sweets leading? Oh my goodness! There's a new box from RetroKit. This is amazing. I get stupidly excited about RetroKit stuff. I think they're one of the smartest companies around for making really fantastic problem-solving devices, especially for the desktop musician. Um, their um, arcade, well, their RK range. This is the RK005. We've looked at that recently. This is the um, the little USB host. So you don't need a computer to use this. Um, going right back, the, this is you know the absolutely brilliant RK004 a MIDI hub. And there's another one in a in a more special surrounding. Um, however. This leads us to the RK006. Now, to explain the RK006, I'm going to have to bring in Garrett. <laughs> right, I guess. What have we got here? Yeah, we got a very small hub, which you can do a lot of new stuff with, actually. And you say hub, are we talking MIDI hub? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a hub for standalone, but also for use on, uh, on computers or iPads. Uh, it, it's a MIDI interface which has uh, ah. 10 uh, individual MIDI out buses. So this must in. be the first MIDI hub that's all on mini jacks then? Yeah. yeah. Okay, very, when very we heard the news that there is some standard uh, set now, we thought let's, let's now switch to small stuff. Really so small stuff. this is something that we've banged on loads about. If manufacturers are going to use mini jacks for MIDI, because you can essentially carry all of the MIDI information in a, in a mini jack that you can in a, the traditional five pin din, we need to have standards. And thankfully, the, the MIDI Association have set upon a standard, and it's two standards. It's, well, there's the A and the B, and yep. the A being, it's the way that they're wired. So, you know, if for standards to work, you need things to be no predictable. No flip wires, no. Right. Mm -hmm. So, have you adopted then standard A? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we thought, well, if uh, people have a, uh, or standard B or DIN 5, we just work with uh, breakout cables. Break. So the breakout cable will essentially flip it around to, yeah. make, to make it work. Okay. Yeah. So let's have, a little, let's have a little discussion about what this actually is then. So we've got, how many? There's 10? Yeah, you have, uh, well, this uh, on the sides we have the uh, the inputs, there are two uh, MIDI inputs which will be merged by the RK6. Um, this is a USB connection, uh, you can connect it to an OTG hub, that's a, uh, you know, when you have a mobile phone and you want to use a keyboard but still want to charge, Yes. Uh, those things. Uh -huh. You can also connect it to the RK6. Ah, so this is actually acting as a host as well? Yeah, it, it sort of flips the RK6 to a host mode instead of a client mode, which it is when you uh, connect it to an to iPad. Right, right, right. And then it can, just as the RK5, it can host multiple USB devices. So actually, yeah, you have USB input as well as valid mm. inputs for uh, this, uh, this device. Wow. And then, yeah, the outputs, you can use them as uh, MIDI output, but you can also uh, change the settings. You can, uh, we have a preset system with some handy stuff like Sync 24 and uh, PO clock ah. because you can set the port to be a gate mode as well. Oh, cool, cool. And like the RK4, which has the clock divisions on it, yep. this one also does that. It does port filtering on every output. Wow. And, and, so, and do you use like a web configurator yeah, to, yeah. to do that? Okay. So just, like, yeah, every uh, setting can be done with MIDI spec sysx messages, but okay, this is really hardcore, so we made web MIDI front end uh, to set all this stuff up. Yeah, because I mean, um, you know, I, I, I use a lot of these these bits and bobs in, in my studio. So, for instance, you know, to configure this, you know, you just by having it connected to the, com uh, well, you you can send it an audio pulse, can't you, from yeah, from yeah. the web from the website? Yeah. That's so clever. Yeah, we imagine sometimes we imagine people come at the strangest places to yeah. make music. So right. when there's nothing left but your phone, yeah. then you can just use the audio signal to last minute changes. Yeah, yeah. Fan fantastic. <laughs> okay, so um, 006, where, where are we in the production schedule with it? Well, uh, the software is working, uh, the PCB is uh, working, uh, we are still researching stuff about the uh, uh, enclosure. 
always something we yeah. uh, take some experimenting on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, we hope actually to have some uh, ready uh, by the end of this year. Okay, so very soon. Now that's really exciting. So, um, do we know uh, what the kind of what cost it's going to be? Yeah, well, we hope to have it around the same price as the RK5 or RK4. Okay. So around 129. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, great. Wow. And I mean, the form factor. It, it seems more in keeping with these smaller devices rather than, you know, going into the... I, initially, I was fighting against the adoption of the mini jack. Yeah. But with these smaller kits, the mini, smaller bits of kit, the mini jack does actually make a lot of sense when you yeah. want to try and get all your kit on in a, in a small kind of space. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. That, that works really well. Um, well, it, it also came... We had, we had the DIN 5 prototype first, but then when you connect it to, for example, an iPad, you think, well, there's something off here. Yeah. And then when the standard came through, we thought, well, we're a small company. If someone can try and see how this uh, is uh, adopted in the public, uh, we'll just have to do it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> but uh, we just sort of actually have a look at this, so this is quite fun. Yeah. So, with the... Um, well, this is, an, this is a... This is a regular the, USB hub. Yeah, USB hub connected to the, the 005. Yeah. Now... You've got something set up here, haven't you, that's a bit unusual? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, also a small demo because, um, well, we thought the uh, here's a USB stick which holds a, a standard MIDI file. Mm -hmm. uh, they use it to, to yeah, make all kinds of, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, quirky uh, yeah. <laughs> covers of uh, songs. Yeah. But you could also, um, still, you can export MIDI files with programs like Reason or uh, and, and it'll, Cubase. And, it, and it'll just read the first yeah. file. So yeah, well, it, it, we, we have, uh, you could put multiple MIDI files on the stick mm -hmm. and you can, when you connect a Nano uh, Control 2 to it, we, yep. we chose this little thing because it's, it has some similarities with a, yeah, you know, a mixing panel. But so we set up this Nano Control to be a mixing panel for the MIDI file. Yeah. So you plug in a USB hub, stick, yep. any Nano Control, and then you can use it to also manipulate the MIDI file. Can you give us a little demonstration? Well, I'll, I'll try. If I press play, I hope uh, it does something. Yeah, it plays. <laughs> so, recognize this. Yeah. Now here we have the the fader control. It does the velocity uh, scaling. I can just slide away parts of the the MIDI tracks. Only this. And uh, change the uh, octave, label higher, different key. Great. Look, absolutely doorless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, you can also play along with uh, the tracks if you want. Uh, so you just select here a. Yeah. Uh, how do I? Like this. Here you see the, the note indicators of uh, which channel is active. If you want to play along with the bass, you just select it, and then it will. It will reroute other devices to play along in that MIDI track. <laughs> it's a bit of a creative use of the old standard MIDI file. Oh yeah, brilliant. <laughs> amazing. Garrett, amazing. Thank you so much for showing us this. And well, thank yeah. you for dropping by. Ah, oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Thanks.